The first time that I laid eyes on a hellbender, I was blown away that an animal so large could be living right beneath our feet and most people have no idea of its presence. Um, there's just a sense of awe that you're kind of looking at this living dinosaur in a sense that, that tells a story of what has been happening in the stream for the last 10 or 15 or 50 years. And I'm broadly interested in how um, these animals that live their entire lives in streams handle a range of different disturbances on the landscape and in the water. So just like you and I have to deal with um, a lot of different stresses in our environment, we know that when those stresses really pile up, it can compromise our health. I'm interested in how aquatic animals deal with a, a number of different stresses. <laughs> how much blood did you get? 700. At this site, I've actually augmented some artificial nest chambers in the river. So these are meant to mimic natural nest sites that hellbenders would use. This is the time of year when hellbenders start breeding. Males will go into a nest cavity and guard a clutch of eggs. Once the females lay them, they fertilize them, and then uh, the female leaves. The male stays with them for months, up to eight months. And so today we're going out to check these artificial chambers to see if any males have come into the boxes and we'll process any nests that we find. And we'll also just capture any hellbender using the box for day-to-day -day use. And we'll take a blood sample and mark and measure and weigh it and then release it right back in the box where we found it. The hellbenders are perfectly designed to live in the bottom of a stream, a really fast flowing stream. They're flattened so that they can handle a really swift current moving right over the top of them and still crawl along the bottom. One of the things people notice is the roughly kind of lateral folds along the side of their body. Um, they've gotten a great nickname, old lasagna sides, from those. And it, those um, folds basically function to increase surface area over their body. And their skin, if you were to look at it through a microscope, you'd see it's packed full of blood vessels that are able to absorb oxygen out of the water and help the hellbender breathe. So they breathe primarily through their skin, but they do have some lungs that they can use in really um, in conditions where there isn't enough oxygen in the water. And they also, one of the, the neatest features you don't get to see on hellbenders until you're really up close are their toes. They have these um, tough little keratinized toe tips that really help them grip onto the bottom and move. And they're, they're pink and they stand out as just really a unique characteristic one of my favorite parts of the hellbender. They live over 25 years in the wild and they eat primarily crayfish is, is the major part of their diet. They are um, virtually harmless to humans. So I've handled hundreds of these animals. I've never had you know, a dangerous encounter or one try to bite. Um, and they uh, show a lot of site fidelity or attachment as we think of it to specific parts of streams. So if I go out and find a hellbender in this section of stream today, if I come back in five or 10 years, there's a really good chance I'll find the animal in the same general vicinity. For children of tomorrow not to be able to go out and see a hellbender is a sad thought for me.